bueno, mis Pérez, first of all, I'm going to try not to turn to Chris Farley and turn this interview and just me like gushing and uh, uh, how awesome you are. But thank you for your time to talk about the flight attendant. And I was actually thinking um, how exciting it is it in the realm of a thriller. Like, for example, like the female roles, this is not what Hitchcock would have done, like in, with your character or with Kaylee's. Like the blonde is not the mysterious femme fatale. And your character is not a psychic. She's got her own stuff going on. So was that exciting to see sort of how you're sort of doing new stuff within the thriller genre? Oh, absolutely. And then also having Kaylee Kuko at the helm. I mean, this is her project. She bought the rights to the book. She assembled the entire team from the production and the executive producers and the writers and, and, and also the cast. Um, along with, of course, Warner Brothers and, and the executive producers, but, you know, and, and to have a woman do all that, you know, and then have this female focus type of series is wonderful. It's wonderful. And in addition to that, to having such a diverse cast, you know, because when you get on a flight, it, it's diverse. The mm -hmm. flight crew is diverse. It represents the world. And I really appreciated that. All right. Do you think because there were women uh, and on the production side that you got the chance to sort of take what was on the page and say like, no, I think Megan would be this way. And they were open to your feedback uh, and to your input of sort of making her, uh, giving her your own spin. Sometimes that doesn't matter, you know, what the gender is of the director or the executive producers or what have you. But on this um, particular project, everybody was supportive everyone from the director, Susanna Fogel, to the executive producers of Steve Yaki and Meredith Lavender and Marcy, um, you know, to Kaylee Cuoco, um, costume designer was also a woman, uh, my hair, was, um, excuse me, makeup was a woman, hair was a man, but it was an inviting and well-respected atmosphere that Kaylee kind of set that tone and so it was very easy and very relieving to be able to say, I know this is how you saw the character, but this is how I see the character. And maybe we can meet in the middle. And they were like, great, let's see what you can do. And I was like, oh my God, that's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's no fight to be had. This is fantastic. So it was really nice. Great. So let me ask you this, because um, the first, I mean, I don't want to, I feel like I'm tap dancing on landmines because I don't want to spoil it for people. I've seen the first four episodes and I have to say like there was one scene where we get to know a little bit more about what's going on with your character and I literally had to rewind like, like wait what's going on with Megan? Like wh how tell me about sort of the fun of toying that line with the audience that you get to sort of spin us in different directions. That must be fun as a performer. It is a lot of fun because when I initially read it, my reaction was exactly like yours. I was like, what, wait? What? <laughs> and, and I said, oh my God, this is fantastic. You know, and the challenge of not revealing uh, your secret or your character in the sense of all that's going in, you know, inside of her um, and her secret life, if mm -hmm. you will, um, it, it, it was really great. It was a great challenge to 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 play with, and uh, you know, and then also the tone. The tone of this piece is actually very very difficult to to find and to play with. We all kind of had to like, you know, figure it out the first day. And but we had a fantastic director, like I said, Susanna Fogel. She was fantastic, and she really really championed us to discover it. And once we got it, we were, we were flying high. Oh my God, no pun intended. I didn't mean that to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, it worked, it worked. So let me ask you this. There's a, there is a line that, um, that struck me um, where Megan tells, I think it's the episode where you guys are in Rome and she like turns, uh, turns to uh, Casey and says like, you have no idea what I can be. Uh, has that been, sort of your fight mantra as an actress, the fact that you haven't been, they haven't been able to like put you in a box. You, you've been fighting for more than 30 years and you're still like surprising us. So I wonder if that rang true uh, for you. Absolutely, absolutely. And if you see that scene, there is a wink and a joy in my delivery 
And it was great that my character was drunk too, you know, <laughs> so I could play that off without it being too heavy handed. But yes, in my career, um, it was very, very difficult, you know, um, having to say no to a lot of offers, to a lot of roles, you know, and just kind of sucking it up and suffering through and saying, I know I'm making the right decision, you know, walking into meetings and saying, yeah, I know this is what you want, but this is what I want. And this is how I would like to portray the uh, character. Um, fighting for just to get into the room was very difficult. There were times where I had to fire representatives and saying, listen, I want something different. And if you don't want it as much as I want it, we shouldn't be working together. You know, if you don't believe in me as much as I believe in myself, this is not going to work. And it really had to come down to me finding the right team and and us working hard together because I had told every single person that I work with, I said, if you could get me in the room, then it's up to me. Mm -hmm. But if you can't get me in the room, you shouldn't represent me because I am a brown woman. I'm a Latina woman. You know, I, 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 I come from a difficult childhood. I have all these stigmas that I know that I have to walk in a room and fight all that bigotry. Mm. Um, and so I'm ready for the fight, are you? You know, and, and it was difficult. It was difficult. Um, and I want, I want to be honest now that I'm older, I'm, 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 I'm glad you asked me that question. I want to be honest to uh, younger people who are aspiring to be in the entertainment industry to understand that you're not crazy. It does hurt. They are prejudiced, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not just you. Um, and, you know, and it hurt a lot. It hurt a lot. You know, th there was, I remember one time I was just walking down the street and one of my neighbors says, how come we don't see you as much? And I just smiled at him. I go, just wait, <laughs> just wait, you know? Yeah. And he was like, wow. I said, you just wait. Mm -hmm. I said, sometimes you gotta pay the price to do what's right. So give me a minute. And, um, you know, so you got to be strong like that. It's tough, but you have to be. No, and I mean, I let the follow up to that is that is, is a conversation I've been having with every uh, Latino uh, or Puerto Rican that I've been lucky enough to talk to that, you know, because the, from the from my point of view, the last two years, diversity and representation have been like buzzwords. So I always ask like, okay, you're behind the scenes. You're the one who are looking at the scripts. Is it really changing? And to you, who's been fighting this fight for more than three decades, like, so I ask you, you know, how is it a little bit, has it seated back a little bit or is it, you still have to fight just as strong to, to, to keep going? It's changed a tiny, tiny Just a tiny bit. bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I remember in the early 90s, they were like, oh, it's the Latino explosion. It was like, mm -hmm. no, it was like, poof, that's all, <laughs> you know, and then it kind of regressed, you know, um, but it is changing a tiny bit. I mean, if you even think about, you know, when I was on Rise on NBC, that TV series, that role was for an Italian American. Mm -hmm. You know, if you think about the movie I got nominated for, that role was for a uh, uh, Italian American, same thing with white man can't jump. And, mm -hmm. you know, even with um, the flight attendant, Megan was supposed to be a white suburban middle-class housewife. And, you know, that's why I always say to people, if you wanna get into the entertainment industry to make a change, don't just do it in front of the camera. You gotta do it behind the camera. You gotta be the, the decision makers, the power, the power movers, the power brokers, because that's how real change happens, you know? Um, uh, you know, and thank goodness for the flight attendant with HBO and HBO Max and Warner Brothers and Kaylee and Berlanti. They're the ones that said, how about we offer this to Rosie Perez? And yeah. everybody went, yeah, you know, <laughs> and, you know, and, and that's how it, it happens, you know, it, honestly, that's how it happens, you know? I'm, an, I'm a character actress. I'm not, I'm not, you know, the 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 glamorous Hollywood starlet actress. I'm not that. I'm a, I'm I'm just a meat and bones character actress, and I'm proud of that, you know. And that said, there's very few roles for for that, you know. Mm -hmm. And so you gotta you gotta fight to 
to get it still, you know, but like I said, it is changing. And the flight attendant is, is proof of that. It really, really is, you right. know, so. So uh, since I have you, they haven't told me, I'm going to push it for one more, one more question. Cause I know you, uh, uh, tell me about being an independent filmmaker during quarantine. Cause I heard that you, you got, you, you use that time to sort of direct a short or tell me a little bit about that, about sort of getting your creative juices behind the camera. Cause I know you did the documentary, but, but este último proyecto, what is it about? Well, it, it's about, um, the first few months of COVID when it just, uh, began when the shutdown began. And Trudy Styler and Sting, um, they're the executive producers behind Beast Project. And, um, you know, they called me up and, and said, we would like to offer you to direct and, and write uh, a 10 minute short and be part of this anthology. And I was, I was blown away. I was like, wow, this is fantastic. And um, I wrote a piece about two sisters uh, dealing with uh, their time with COVID from two different perspectives. Um, perspectives and um and i did it i the way i wrote it was it was all via facetime to really uh. show the alienation and um and i hired justina machado who i love yo la uh, adoro también she should have oh won dancing God. with the stars but that's beside the point pero, pero, <laughs> ella, ella genial, ella um, genial. and uh you know and you know and it was easy it was so easy directing her and working with her we had a blast but it was hard let me tell you, I am by myself in my house because my husband had a residency at the Elaine de Kooning Institute. Oh, wow. um, he's a painter. So he was away from me for the first eight weeks of the shutdown. And so I had no help in carrying the heavy film equipment up and down the stairs. Um, was really difficult. And then, you know, yelling out by myself, okay, roll sound, roll camera, <laughs> and then calling Justina, okay, action and then hanging up and then running into the position it was it was bananas but i loved every single minute of it and the most important thing it started to help me lose my covid fat so that wasn't really <laughs> <laughs> let's not it talk about really that nice. let's not talk let's not talk about that cuz i have <laughs> Um, <laughs> all right, so una ñapita como decimos lo 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 boricua one more because i have you like what that year, and you said you're a character actress, and, and the fact that people have such fleeting memories, you know what I mean? Like, I would just, if I were you, I was just gonna like, did you, you know, 91, you know, White Men Can Jump, and then Untamed Heart, and then Fearless. If that doesn't show your range, I mean, people are crazy. But what do you remember particularly about that time? Uh, particularly Untamed Heart, which is a movie that I know a lot of people may not bring up to you, but I thought your performance of that was equally lovely even though may not be as bombastic and and as the other two but i just wonder if you could put me there what do you remember i remember going in for the role and um like i said it was supposed to be for another white girl and um you know prior to walking into that room i had to have a talk with myself you know just calm down you have this check your emotional baggage at the door walk in like you already have the job. And Marissa Tomei and I just clicked right away. And it was fantastic. And I really, really enjoyed that job. It was hard because it was so freaking cold. <laughs> <laughs> we got on location, um, but I really, really appreciated that job. But, you know, once again, I had to fight for it. All right, well, so. it's, I. Given that you're a fan of boxing, I know you're gonna keep fighting. Uh, I love your boxing tweets. So thank you so much for your time. Uh, muchísimas gracias, un abrazo grande, grande, grande.